Now before long when you start in Inkscape you are going to come across a project where you're going to want a shadow behind a shape. Well there are many ways that you can do this but not all of them are easy. But today I'm going to show you a few shortcuts to get you there quicker. Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. Rob here from Button Press Graphics and today I'm going to be showing you a few little things that you can do to create a shadow behind one of your shapes. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now on the screen as you can see there are four shapes and I've done this so I can give you some examples on the usual way that beginners might try and create these shapes now it's worth mentioning that none of these methods are wrong if they work for you then great all I am going to do today is show you a couple of methods that you might not already know about now in this first example as you can see on screen I have now got two boxes of varying colors so they are easier to spot and what you can do to this shape is you can then create a box with the pen tool filling in the gaps that would normally be left behind and once you have done that you can hold shift select them both and then go to path union now what this has done is has just mixed all them shapes that i had selected as one complete shape so now if i drop this down to the bottom as you can see it makes a pretty effective shadow behind the box and this can work in multiple different ways in this example this is just a smaller box and if you do exactly the same method you can select both of them go to path union and then drop it to the bottom to get this effect and it works well however where you're going to come unstuck is when you're trying to get the angles right as you can see with this box that I created by hand it's not perfect the angle of this line here is not the same as this one here so it's not going to look right and then you've got the corner here as well that is not going to sync correctly with the corner of the shape just to show you I will do exactly what I did before I will change the color drop it to the bottom and as you can see it just does not look right it's very difficult to get all of the angles right but even when you do there are still going to be areas that you need to tweak so no matter what you do it's going to be a lot of messing about to get yourself to the same point so at this point you're going to be asking me well what are these new little ways that i've got for you to learn that's going to help you with this extensions Extensions are the more advanced features of Inkscape, but they are features that you would need to learn in order to improve your designs. So we're going to select our shape and then we are going to simply copy this by Ctrl and D or Ctrl Alt and D, Command and D if you are on a Mac and now we have two separate shapes now i'm going to lower the size of this just so i can show you and i'm going to change the color to a very dark blue the reason i've changed the color is simply so it's more visible what i am actually doing to these shapes so now we're going to hold shift we're going to select both of the shapes and we're going to go to extensions scroll down to generate from path and now we are going to extrude between two paths now when you do you will get a little box that looks something like this appear on your screen when it does check the live preview and as you can see it has now drawn a box directly from the back shape to the front shape or the two shapes that you had selected now if you hit apply and then close what you'll see that this has done 
has created a whole new set of shapes to bridge the gap between the two shapes that you had selected. Now this is easier if I just show you. So we're going to take the two main shapes, move them out of the way, and now what we're left with is the intersecting parts between the two paths that we had selected in the first place. Now from this stage you can ungroup them by coming up here and selecting the yellow one to ungroup and now we have all the separate shapes within these paths. Now all we can see in the main design are these bits here that go along the top. Every other shape we can select and we can delete. We don't need them. And now as you can see we have a much better shadow behind the two shapes but it is not perfect you might still have to go back and tweak little areas like this there is also another method that you can use to do a similar job come back to extensions generate from path and now you can interpolate between paths again a little box will open up, make sure that you have the live preview ticked. And what this has done differently, it has made a series of shapes getting progressively bigger from one shape as the start point and another shape as the end point. As for the settings within this box, the interpolation steps are the thing that you need to keep an eye on. If you put it too high, it can become a problem. But you can also use this to completely change designs. And as you can see, it gets a whole lot smoother. Now, if I show you apply, and then I close out. What we have now is a series of shapes that are all grouped together that make up a path coming from this shape to this one. Now, one last thing when it comes to the interpolate. When you come down, you will see duplicate end paths. This is ticked by default. And what that will do is it will also duplicate the two end shapes that it's using as a guide. If you don't want them to be duplicated, then you just untick this box. The interpolate style also means take into account all the different shading, colors, and strokes that are involved in both of the shapes. So the back shape that I have got here is a very dark blue, whereas the light blue is at the front. So if I put interpolate style checked on, you will see it takes it into account and now has blended the colors to make a really nice gradient. Now, one last way in order to make a shadow around your box is very, very simple indeed. Again, just using one of the extensions. Go to extensions, generate from path, and then simply come down to long shadow. Live preview again. And as you can see, it has already done a shadow. And this little table here is pretty self-explanatory. Length is the length of the shadow in particular. So as I increase it, you will see that the length from the shape to the edge of the shadow has now become a lot longer. The angle is exactly the same. So if I pick a 90 degree angle, as you can see, it comes vertically down and you can go up to 360 degrees, of course, and choose exactly where it goes. And finally, fill shadow with the stroke color. So if I come to this shape here and close out of that without making any changes, just to begin with, if I put a black stroke on the shape and then go back to generate from path, long shadow, 
now when I tick this box and I put the live preview on it is now a black box now of course it's worth mentioning that these extensions will work on any path so if you try and do this on text for example you might come into a few issues but I'm going to run through a quick tutorial with the text so I can give you a full overview of using these extensions now once you have used the text tool on the left hand side and you have created a box on your canvas and typed the text that you want you will have something that looks like this now all i have done with this is just put 3d text and left all the defaults exactly as they were but the bigger the text the better this is going to work so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring out my menus on the right hand side i'm going to navigate to the font menu and if you haven't got it open you can open yours right here at the top toolbar and then i'm going to scroll down until i find some lettering that is really nice and i think i am just going to go with russo one because it's nice and thick that looks a lot better now of course to use the same extensions in the same way we would normally duplicate this by right clicking and selecting duplicate and then we are going to make this slightly smaller change it to red and move that off to the side now normally if we would just select both of these text boxes and go to extensions generate from path this is going to happen the reason that you get this error is because it can only generate between the paths it cannot generate between text blocks like this and if we look down at the bottom as you can see it says this is a text item in order to change that you just highlight the text that you want to change go to path object to path these are now no longer text objects they are complete paths now because they are paths when we go to the extensions generate from path and we do something like interpolate we are going to get something that looks a little bit like this and that's pretty much it my friends that is how you can put a shadow behind any shape that you can think of without the tedious thing of working out where all the angles should go if you found this helpful please by all means hit that subscribe button and ding that bell if you want to be notified every time i upload i will be back again soon with some more inkscape tutorials and if you would like me to do any work or you would like to send me your work then you can do so all the information you need is in the description thanks for watching my friends i'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and i will see you in the next one